Here's the third molecule from our worksheet. Let's start by drawing our lines at 1500. We're gonna ignore all of these things in the fingerprint region. Draw our line at 3000. Um, we see no special hydrogens that are showing up in this molecule. This is a pretty normal looking carbon hydrogen peak. I think there's no benzene in this molecule. It's not as strong as normal, but it's really clean. And so it doesn't look like we have benzene. This is a peak that's impossible to miss, uh, showing up at around 1700. This is our carbon oxygen double bond. We're gonna wanna keep that in mind when we're working on our molecular formula that we do have an oxygen atom in this molecule. Let's do that next. Let's go to our mass spec. Our mass spec shows that we have a molecular weight of 102 and there's no chlorines, there's no bromines. So let's go ahead and get our molecular formula. Don't forget we have an oxygen atom that we saw in the IR. 102 minus 16 is 86. Divide that by 13 is six carbon atoms. To get the number of hydrogen atoms, we're gonna go 102 minus 16 for the oxygen minus 12 times six for all of those carbon atoms. 102 minus 16 minus 12 times six is 14 hydrogens. And let's calculate, let's look at that C6H14O. Let's go ahead and calculate that HDI. Six times two is 14. 12. <laughs> 6 times 2 is 12 plus 2 is 14. Minus the 14 that we have is an HDI of 0. That might seem okay, but remember that we can't have an HDI of 0 because we know that we have a carbon-oxygen double bond. That's impossible for us to have an HDI of 0. So that means that there's something going on in this molecular formula that we don't have figured out quite right. Um, there's a couple of different options that could be the problem here. So one possibility is that we actually have seven carbons. When I did the math on this, I think I got 6.6. .6. Like maybe should we be rounding this up to seven carbon atoms? That's one thing. Another possibility is that this could actually be two oxygen atoms. So this could be a, a molecule that is an ester. And maybe there's a second oxygen atom in there that we can't see in the IR. In a situation like this, and this, like I said, is very tricky because an HDI of zero is normal. So unless you were really paying attention and remembering that you had to have an HDI of at least one, you could have like, you know, really just kind of forged forward here without realizing something was wrong. So what I'm gonna do is look forward to the proton NMR to get an idea of how many hydrogens we should actually have in this molecule. We're gonna use that to help us narrow down and, and correct this molecular formula. Proton NMR is telling us that we have two plus two plus three plus three. We have a total of 10 hydrogens in this molecule. Um, so let's take that information back. Maybe also let's look at the carbons. Oh, the car looking at the carbons is not very useful. So we, we actually only have 10 hydrogens in the molecule, not 14. So we're going to consider two options. So option number one is that maybe there are actually two oxygen atoms. Option number two, maybe there are actually seven carbon atoms. Both of those are possibilities. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of cross this out because we know that it's not possible because we know that we can't have an HDI of zero. And I'm gonna um, re go back to the 102 and I'm gonna consider the possibility of two oxygens. And what I need is to come up with a formula that has 10 hydrogens and an HDI of at least one. So we're gonna try this again. Um, scenario number two, molecular weight is 102 minus 32 for those two oxygen atoms. 102 minus 32 is 70 divided by 13 is five carbon atoms. To get the number of hydrogen atoms, we go 102 minus the two oxygen atoms minus five times 12 for the five carbon atoms. 102 minus 32 minus five times 12 is 10 hydrogens. So that actually ended up working out. 
um, C5H10O2. We are going to just double check this by making sure that we get an HDI of at least one. The number of carbon atoms times two is 10 plus two is 12 minus the 10 hydrogen atoms that we have is two divided by two is an HDI of one. So that ended up getting, we got it right on the first try. The molecular formula is C5H10O2. This is something that you always need to kind of look out for that um, if you have an ester, which looks like this, this oxygen atom is not going to show up in the IR, and you're just going to have to get hints by coming up with an HDI that doesn't make sense. So our formula is C5H10O2 with an HDI of 1. Let's go take a look at our proton NMR, C5H10. Ten O two, and we know that we have a carbon oxygen double bond specifically we know that we have an ester like that and we have uh, two protons that are split into a quartet two times so that means that we have two protons split into a quartet means n equals three so we've got this that's associated with this peak. And then we have another exactly identical group. So we've got that group two separate times. And then for our other two peaks, we have three, could be these guys right here, that are split into a triplet. A triplet is three, so that means n equals two. And so that is what it is. These three are these three being split into a triplet these three are these guys being split into a triplet. So it looks like we just have two ethyl groups in this molecule. And how can we put all of that together? With our ester, we know that we have an ester. So we'll just draw that ester right here. And then I'm going to stick my second ethyl group on the end, CHH. And if we uh, are correct in this, if we go down to our Carbon NMR, we should expect to see one, two, three, four, five total carbon peaks. One, two, three, four, five. Looks good. So there's our structure.